So let's go through the code and see what this means. So we are saying that try to run this block of code. Just keep running it. But if you encounter an exception, that's an IR error. Okay, that's when, for example, you try to tell it to open a file that doesn't exist in the folder. When it, when it encounters an IR error, display this message. When it encounters a value error, which is, for example, when it's trying to convert something from the file that is not an integer, display this message, a value error occurred. Else, else means that you didn't encounter any of these errors, right? Else means everything is fine. You didn't encounter any of these errors, so display the average for us. That means you didn't encounter any problems, display the average for us. But if at any point it encounters an IO error or it encounters a value error, the program it will display these messages, right? If it encounters an IO error, error, it will display this message and then skip the else part. Else won't run. It will skip it. Finally, will always run. If at any time it encounters a value error, it will display this um, message and then skip the else part. Else, the else part won't run. Finally, will always run. Right? <clears throat> but if, um, if it doesn't encounter any of these errors, right, then that means the else will run. All right? That means there was no, <coughs> there was no um, ex exception. So let's display the message. The uh, average to us. Else means, else if there's no exception thrown out or exception raised, then display our average for us. And then finally, display the end of program. Again, end of program will um, this finally close over here. This finally statement will always run. So let's run our program and see what happens. It says a value error occurred because over here in our file, we changed one number to a string. And over here, it's trying to convert. A particular line, it, it gets, it gets, it try, it gets, to, it goes through all these numbers. It's able to convert them to an integer, but it gets to this particular line, and we can see that it's basically facing an, an error. Um, in in that in that error in that except in that um, error message that displayed here before, when we didn't handle the value error, L let's go ahead and remove this so we can see it clearly. I'm going to cut this. I'll paste it back. So now we don't have any code to handle the value errors. Run this. And it says invalid literal for int with base 10. And we can see that it's displaying this particular string. This is a string that we have in our in our file. This is what we typed. See? So it got to this line and it's struggling to convert this to an integer. And that's why it crashed. Right? But we have code. Let me go ahead and do over here. We have code that's going to handle value error. So if it encounters an exception, that's a value error. Display a value error occurred. Now it says a value error kid, end of program. Now we've, we're done basically, right? But it's not helpful to just tell the user an IO error occurred, a value error occurred. See, the user won't see that particular string in the file that is um, causing the problem. The user won't, won't see, may not see that, oh, they've, mis they've typed numbers to t uh, this file name wrongly. Like if I run the program, it just tells me an IO error occurred. How would I know exactly? I can't go through the code. You know, it's it's un, it's not too helpful. So let's do something more descriptive, right? And let's let's let the program do something more descriptive for us. Tell us exactly what's wrong. So anytime an exception is thrown, an um, an exception object is created in memory. If you look back to the average of, of um, average of numbers program, we I talked about this, and I think I've talked about it in the previous um, chapter six videos too. Anytime an exception is thrown, right, an exception object is created in memory. Now, that this exception object, okay, contains information about that particular error that was thrown. It contains information about it, including the error messages that we're seeing here. Now, the error messages that we're seeing here is not seen by the user. It's not. Right? So, again, anytime an, um, an error is thrown, an, an exception is thrown or raised, an exception object is created in memory. And that object contains all the information about that error. Now we can assign that object to a variable like this. So if an exception is thrown, that is an IO error. Let's assign it to a variable and we can call it anything. We can say, uh, we can say error, for example. This is just a variable name. It, we can call it anything. Again, when exception is thrown, an exception object uh, is created in memory. And we can use the ask keyword to assign it 
uh, to assign it to a variable called error. And when we print this error message, this particular error message, the program will display that error message that we saw over here to the user, right? So we can keep this print statement and say, an IO error occurred, and we can pass it into the print function like this. When you pass multiple arguments into the print function this way, they are displayed with a space separating them by default, right? So it's going to print out an error, an IO, um, an IO error occurred, colon, space, and then the error message, right? They are displayed, when you pass an argument into the print function this way, they are displayed with a space separate in them, right? So again, when an, when an exception is thrown, if it encounters an, an exception, an IO exception, it's going to create an exception object. We are using this as keyword to assign that exception object to this variable. We know that exception object contains all the information about the error. So now, since we've assigned the exception object to this variable, this variable contains all the information about the error. If we print this variable into the, in the, um, using the print function, it will display the error message to us. So now we have an IR, IR, um, IR error. When I run this program, now it's adding the exact um, error message to us. Um, it's adding it to it and it's displaying it to us. So it's saying an IR error occurred, and this, we are printing out this variable. This variable contains the exception objects that we, um, we assigned over here to, to it. And when you print that variable, it, it displays the error message that we saw, the exact error message, telling the user more information, saying no such file or directory nearest.txt. So you can go here and say, oh, I typed nearest.txt. Let me change it to numbers.txt. Run, and it says um, a value error occurred now because we still haven't changed this number, right? So again, because um, an exception, had, well, a value error exception was thrown, it created an exception object in memory. We can assign this exception object, this value error exception object, to another variable. It doesn't matter. You can still you can call it anything. I'm going. I'm still going to use a name error. But if you want to use another name, that's fine. These are two separate ones, right? It's either we're going to get an IO error or a value error or both. Like one is going to happen first. Once we encounter an IO error, it displays a message and everything else is done. It doesn't even you know. It doesn't um, run anything else. It just moves straight to the final equals. So it doesn't matter if you use the same name, but you can use another name if you want. So I am assigning this exception, value error exception um, object to this variable. And again, once you display the content of that variable, okay, I am passing in this variable into the print function. When you pass in var um, arguments into the print function this way, by default, yeah, displayed with a space separate in them. All right, so, so in both cases, we're going to have something meaningful. When I run this program, let me add a colon here. It says a value error occurred invalidly, invalidly trial for int with base 10. And this is the actual value that it's trying to convert, and it, it can't. The reason why it has this backslash n by default is because that is what, it, that is what is causing this, that, that is what is causing the next item to be displayed on the next line. There's a backslash n here. That is what is causing it to be displayed for each of these numbers to be displayed on a new line. So displaying this because of the black backslash n, the next value that follows this string is displayed from the next line going, right? So the backslash n is causing causing anything that follows this string to be displayed from the next line going. So let's change this to a number, let's say 45 or 45, 45. Save it. Now, when we try to run this, it's able to calculate the average based on these numbers. So let's run the program. Let's try again. Change this file name to nrs.txt. Run this. It says an IO error occurred. No such file or directory, nrs.txt. Let's change it because it's opening this folder and it can't find nrs.txt. Let's type in numbers.txt. Run this program and it's able to now calculate the average. Let's go to the file again, change one number to let's say, let's add, let's say a backslash with some, you know, characters. Save the file, the text file, run the program, and it says a value error occurred, invalidly trial for int with base 10. It, it's struggling to convert this to an integer over here. It's, and because, it's, and because of that, it's a value error. But at least this is giving the, the user some information 
um, and the program is not crashing. It's cr it's it's ending gracefully. <laughs> That's what they normally say. It's ending uh, gracefully. That's what programmers normally say. Graceful um, crash, I guess. <laughs> All right. So let's fix this file. Change it back to a number. Let's say five or fifty-five. Save it. Run this program. It's able to calculate an average. So it has no errors now. And it, in, and and at any time it it encounters errors, our code is going to be able to handle. Um, valley errors and IO errors. Now these are the only exceptions that we've we've written code for, because that's what the question said we should do. We are following the question exactly. We've modified the program. We've handled IO errors. We've modified value errors, and we're done. All right. All right. So it was a bit rough because again, it's been a while since I made these videos. I am back again because I traveled, and I was doing some other things. But I'll be making these videos from now onwards, and I'll keep them coming. Um, I'll go through all the programming challenges in the book, both um, Java, both Python, uh, both Java and Python, add C sharp and other languages, you know, H um, web development and all that stuff. And um, I'll add them all to it. So the videos will be coming, and so don't worry at all. And I'll also reply to the comments. I know I'm way behind in comments. It's some some have taken months, but I will reply to every single one of them, even the really old ones. And I apologize. I'm very sorry, but I'll keep the videos coming. All right. So I miss you all too. I miss you all. I miss this. This really makes me happy. Um, so yeah, let me <laughs> stop talking before I keep going. All right. So I hope this video helped. If you have any questions, please comment down below as always, um, and I'll always respond um, gladly. Thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time with the next program. All right then. Bye bye. <laughs> I miss saying that too. All right. Anyway, take care. Bye-bye.